Ez a konferencia a film jegyében fog lezajlani, és elhatároztam, hogy lenyűgözlek benneteket az első komolyabb megszólalásomnál, és azt gondoltam, hogy hozok két fej tökfödőt, és ezzel bemutatom, hogy milyen bonyolult is a film szakma. Ez az első. Ezt fölvettem, amikor megvásároltam, és hazamentem, és megmutattam a feleségemnek, akivel több mint 40 éve koptatjuk egymást, és mondom, na mit szólsz, melyik filmben volt ez a, ez a sapka, és így nem, nem tudom. A, a fiam a, éppen otthon volt, és ő filmzeneszerző is, hát gondoltam, hogy jobban ért a filmekhez, mint a többiek, és ő pedig azt mondta, hogy hát a Pál utcai fiúk. Én azért vásároltam meg ezt a sapkát abban a boltban, ahol a, a Saul fia sapkáit vásárolták, hogy ezzel, mint egy megemlékezzünk arról, hogy egy gyönyörű film kapott Oscar díjat idén. És aztán végig gondoltam, hogy hol láttam még ilyen sapkát, és milyen az emberi memória, hogy eszembe jutott, hogy Chaplin egyik híres filmje, a The Kid, a Kölyök, abban is van egy sapka, egy kisgyereken egy ilyen túlméretes sapka van, és ez egy ilyen emblematikus eleme a filmnek. És abban a boltban, ahol jártam, azt mondtam, hogy adjanak nekem egy bizonyos sapka, bizonyos kalapot, megmutattam természetesen a az internetről levadászva, hogy az milyen is. Ez így néz ki. És ez, ahogy szokták mondani, az, arra kértem, hogy emlékeztessen a Kaszablanka filmre. A feleségem ezt se ismerte föl. Nyilván hiányoz, hiányzott neki alól a Humphrey Bogart, úgyhogy ezt nem tudtam, ezt nem tudtam szállítani. És próbáltam menteni a helyzetet, és elkezdtem kutatni a weben, hogy vajon hány filmben szerepel ez a bizonyos fazonú sapka vagy kalap, és rájöttem, hogy a megré felügyelőnek is ilyen, ilyen kalapja van, és aztán rájöttem, hogy a San Francisco utcáiban a felügyelőnek is ilyen kalapja van. Ez egy legendás forma, de mögötte kell legyen egy karakter, a karakter mögött egy sztori, egy történet. Egy jó filmben nem csak kalap van, fontos, ami alatta van, a karakter és a történet. Sok történetet fogunk ma hallani, és az első előadónknak is van egy története. Miért pont ő ad elő ma? Egy évvel ezelőtt, januárban elhatároztam, hogy meglátogatom az egyik barátomat Barcelonában, akit több, több mint húsz éve nem láttam, és fölhívtam a, az üzlettársát, akit személyesen ismerek, hogy szervezzünk egy meglepetés találkozót, én elmegyek Barcelonába, május körül, és akkor már megvolt az a repülőjegyem, és akkor valahol találkozunk vele, és ott akkor oda jön az én barátom, és meg lesz lepődve nagyon. És ezt ilyen nagyon lelkesen megírtam, semmi válasz. Utána fölhívtam telefonon a, az üzlettársát a barátomnak, és elmondtam még lelkesebben, és, és én mondta, jó. Azon gondolkoztam, hogy mi lehet itt a probléma. És két hét múlva jött egy levél, egy e-mail, ami arról szólt, hogy a te barátod, még nem mondom a nevét, bár benne van a műsorban, nagyon beteg, és ő fogja eldönteni, hogy akar-e veled találkozni. Ezek után még inkább akartam találkozni, és létrejött ez a nagy, nagyon érzelmes és nagyon megrázó találkozás vele, és azon megállapodtunk, hogy meghívom a múlt évi konferenciára, és igent is mondott, de akkor, amikor a tavalyi konferencia volt, akkor volt az utolsó kezelése. És most itt van közöttünk. Paul, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very, very much, uh, Shandor. Uh, I have no words to express uh, how happy I am to be with you this morning uh, near Budapest, in Hungary, 
And uh, there's a very good reason for this. Uh, Hungary and Budapest have always been part of my life, strangely enough, for an American, and very much part of my career, as you will see. Uh, I'm looking at faces. I feel very at home because I think I'm with the same people that I knew in Budapest in Hungary in 1989. Couldn't you show me if you were working in IT in some uh, capacity in 1989 like this? Probably many of us. You weren't. <laughs> you were a thought. <laughs> a nice thought. <laughs> Here I am in Microsoft Germany. We were expanding, and I like the photo very much, not because I'm younger, but because it's very emblematic of how we felt in 1989. We were building something new. It was a, it really, this is a construction of a new building in Munich, but it's very emblematic of how things were. And it was very exciting. And here on the second uh, slide, you see how Budapest had a key role in the region and in Microsoft's activities in the first years. Because as you know, if you are a CIO or you are a, an IT professional, we must have standards. And so one of the first moves we did was to establish a standard for the special characters in not only the Hungarian alphabet, but the other alphabets in the Eastern European and Central European region. And this was done at this conference that I had the pleasure of organizing with Microsoft. Where? In Budapest. And this is where we had uh, some uh, old names that many of you will feel nostalgic about. Ashton Tate, Borland, Lotus, Microsoft, uh, and then distributors from the entire region. Uh, we united and we came up with the agreement of Budapest for the code page 852 and then 1250 uh, in um, Windows, which of course, then the next step was to get started. And this is one of my key themes this morning with you. One of my main messages, the success we had was a partnership between IT and marketing. And this is uh, even more critical for you as we go into the next four years until the year 2020 and the next decade. Uh, one of the first things we did with code page 852 was Alphabet Plus. Very simple, basic add-on for the DOS-based applications. And Microsoft works for Central and Eastern Europe. And then, of course, uh, here, this is why I had to come up. Not only Shandor brought hats, I brought you something that you might want to look at in the coffee break. Uh, you are free to look at it. This is uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, souvenirs from Budapest, September 1992. And it's not the Hungarian version, uh, Trent localized. It was the first one which was adapted, the 3.14, uh, um, the uh, you know, Hungarian uh, language. Later, uh, well, yes, it was, it was quite popular, but uh, uh, I would need Google Translate to read the article, you know? <laughs> so, but the fun thing is, from that point, we went on to uh, something which is very much my philosophy. Be humble if you are in a new market and count on friends. Make friends and count on friends. And one of my strongest friends was Shandor, Mr. Shandor and Computer World because we, of course, from Munich, we knew nothing. And I said many times to my team, we know nothing. And I had so much support and help in Hungary for which I will always be uh, grateful. And so this is why I'm so happy to be back in the country that I had so much fun with and, and so many good examples of cooperation between strange people like me from marketing and the, the salespeople, they are strange too, <laughs> and then the IT. And so I, I thought in the next uh, 25 minutes we can look at what I, I call the flow chart for success, for your success and for my success uh, until the year 2020 and beyond. Well, first of all, we have um, the challenge, then we have opportunities, and uh, what is waiting for all of us is the future. Before I go on, uh, before we really go on and I show you an interesting uh, vision of the future from Google, I want to mention Mr. Uh, Korda, uh, Alexander Korda, uh, or Korda Shandor, no? <laughs> Uh, because uh, one of the keys of his success, and this is why he is Sir Alexander Korda, is he was able to successfully move from silent movies to talkies, to movies with sound. 
And you and I are in a very similar moment, as you will see in my presentation. And we must make the move from silence to not only sound, but speed. Let me show you what I mean in the next video. It's about one minute. And it shows you uh, the vision of Google for micro moments. And this will impact marketing and also IT. will not applause, but I will leave the Google logo up one more second for just to honor that vision. Quite frankly, uh, that vision is, it's amazing. I mean, do you sometimes say to yourself, looking in the mirror, I am part of a science fiction movie, <laughs> to talk about movies, because let's talk about challenges. Just shortly after I left Microsoft, I was in Microsoft seven years, five years, I was responsible for Central and Eastern Europe in the marketing. Uh, and then sh two or three years after that, Bill Gates gave a very famous speech, and I'm sure many of you are going to remember this speech. Uh, maybe you were in Comdex in 1995 when he showed us a, a similar marketing presentation of uh, some police in Seattle. They're looking for criminals, and what are they using? in their uh, police car. They're using something very similar to a, an app, uh, iPad. Uh, they obviously have something like, you know, 4G, 3G. The information is there when they need it. This was, in 1995, what is the Hungarian word for impossible? Okay. I mean, it was like, you know, somebody could have said, uh, after listening to Bill Gates in Las Vegas, what is he smoking? You know, uh, it seemed very far away. We are living this now 20-some years after. And so the good things that are impacting us in communication, in sales, in marketing, and in strategic vision for your company is we have technology like this that is omnipresent, it's immediate, and it's hyper-personal. In, in marketing, we talk about the always-on customer. They are always on, just like you. They, you see information you need, you look for it, you find it, you buy it, correct? Many of us, if the connection is good. <laughs> but it also means, this is in green for a reason, because in red, for you, for all of us sitting here, and it also impacts my technical department in Spain, we have increasing problems or challenges with the complexity of the cloud uh, on an on a enterprise level, cybersecurity, obviously, and then this whole phenomenon, if everything is so personal, and if I have so much computing power in my iPhone or my Android, this bring your own device, and how we're managing these devices on an enterprise level for a CIO, uh, it's, a, it's a big headache, I know. So, um, but that's on the IT side. Uh, the people like me in marketing, I want you to know we also have some problems, okay? Uh, the revolution is wonderful. It does many great things, like we saw in Bill Gates' great vision. But we also now, because of hyper-personalization, 
We have consumers and customers who hide from us. They surround themselves with what I call the personal cybersphere. And this is a model I developed in 2001 to explain to my customers why are they not responding to our email marketing, our uh, campaign online, uh, later in social media, why don't we have an answer? Each one of us, to protect ourselves from so much information, we activate the cybersphere, the personal cybersphere. Basically, it has four levels, and you have them here, R1, R2, R3, R4. So, first of all, your company needs to be recognized. You're relevant. You're from today. Then, you have to respond to them quickly. If you do so and you, you speak to customers in this century in a way that their digital lifestyle understands, then you come to R3, which is Tistelet, right? Okay? Respect. And if you can get to respect, then you have a happy family in the middle. You know, it's like a relationship. Many years they're buying your products. They're, they're telling their friends, their cousin about you. It, it's really wonderful. It's hard work. Let me tell you something else. Many of these R's, like um, being recognized for being uh, relevant technologically, responding in the correct channel quickly, I, I would say for marketing, I need you. I need your help, CIO. Because if we, in marketing, don't have the necessary knowledge of technology and the tools and the help from the IT department, we are lost. And we will never get inside this protective shield. Is this clear? Do you understand what I mean by that? So, we have a lot of challenges, but you know, uh, this is a very American thing. Robert Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, you know, there's an opportunity here. Uh, I think many of us are um, uh, and. Um, uh, entrepreneurs, I have to say it in, in French instead of Spanish. <laughs> you know, we start our own companies, we look uh, in the lobby, there are some excellent examples of people starting new visions. Uh, much of the technology that worldwide is known, like Prezi, is Hungarian, and people don't know that. Uh, one of the most important persons in Microsoft in the 80s was Hungarian, Mr. Shimoni. So, um, again, I'm going to talk about uh, another famous. Hungarian and uh, something that will give us an opportunity for more business and more money for your department if we practice flow. And this, again, it's another Hungarian, you know? It's like, Chik sent Mihai. Chik sent Mihai. Mihai. How's that? I was practicing, practicing that last night, you know? The, I know the pronunciation is from Seattle, I'm sorry, but. This one book in the 1990s influenced me on a personal level and also on a professional level because I have to tell you, everything we do with business marketing, communication, is designed using technology to create flow. Meaning, we want from the moment somebody thinks of my product to going to the channel that they use, mobile or web or social. We want the whole experience just to flow, 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 flow. No interruption. We don't want any fragmentation. Only flow, flow, flow. Because flow translates into endorphins of happiness. You don't need Coca-Cola for happiness. You know that. <laughs> you need flow. <laughs> so we are always trying to create flow. And many of these things that are already part of our lives are starting to help us create flow in communication or marketing. Uh, biometrics, voice, and, and face recognition is part of our daily life. You know, uh, let's see if I'm, if I'm fortunate. I know I don't have a lot of time, but I, I did want to ask Siri one second about the Samsung stock price. What is the Samsung? Okay, so Siri, uh, as you know, we increasingly just use uh, voice, uh, facial recognition. We have tools in the agency now where we are looking and checking the flow to see how, okay, thank you, how the uh, people are responding. Uh, and the next uh, uh, frontier for the next five years, let us say, is going to be heavily uh, investing in artificial intelligence. We already have bots that are doing a lot of the uh, responding to customers, the second R, response, uh, in the name of your 
company and your brand, they're responding and they're helping people find the answers they need. And of course, uh, virtual reality. Uh, Facebook just this week announced uh, their new social network which will be based on virtual reality. Everyone is very excited, everyone is euphoric. I am not so euphoric. I want you to know, does anybody remember Second Life in 2007? It was a 3D virtual world. I spent five years of my life in Second Life. <laughs> I was testing to see what are virtual 3D communities like, how do people act, etc. And then it uh, was too early and it went away. So we will see what happens with VR. But in general, when we go to the film studios tonight, keep that in mind. And I, and I do feel that now the, the 2.0 of VR, of virtual reality, is starting to pick up speed. Uh, I told Shandor this last night when we had dinner, both VR and uh, Internet of Things are surprising me. I'm always looking at the future, every moment, every day, I have my hand on the pulse of the future, and they're going fast. If you want me to put all of this in one word, what is waiting for us, what we need to do together, it's called speed. We have to go as fast as your customers. Because if you don't go as fast as your customers, you don't exist. You are not recognized by them as a company that is relevant in the, in the 21st century. So with the eight minutes that I have left, let me show you an astounding quote from last month from the worldwide marketing manager of McDonald's in a conference in California. She says, we must future-proof McDonald's and market our products at the speed of now. She did not put the hashtag. I did for this conference. By the way, this conference has never been heard before. It's only for you, only for this day in Abacus. Uh, it is uh, on SlideShare at the, the final, uh, almost final slide. I show you the address for SlideShare. You can download it and look at it later. And this is also my Twitter uh, account, and I, we're also on LinkedIn if you want to find us, so we can continue to talk. But uh, I made this a hashtag right away when I saw it. We must go at the speed of now. If we don't, and this is high speed. What is waiting for us on the other side of 2020? Those 10 years, from 2020 to 2030. High speed creativity, high speed solutions. I mean, really fast, like, <laughs> it just downloads. I, I, I have to tell you, I am still in awe of many things from the internet, and one of them is uh, Wi-Fi, omnipresent uh, internet connection, or 4G, 5G, whatever. Uh, it's going to get faster, and McDonald's knows it. The other thing that I wanted to share with you today, because I think it's a good moment that you have this conference in, in October, because many CIOs, you're making your plans for 2017, you're, you're deciding where do I invest my team, my money, my resources. Uh, this is a new report from Accenture in the United States that says that basically between now and 2035, artificial intelligence is going to make enormous big contributions in economic growth. It's also going to uh, make people much more productive, 40% much more productive. And unfortunately, Hungar Hungary is not listed in the countries where they did this survey, but you see from 37% to 11% they forecast that just the, uh, the fact that artificial intelligence will be in so many products, IoT, or in, in uh, messengers, uh, or, or in uh, brands that speak to you with synthetic persons through artificial intelligence, and you will think you're talking to a person. All of this is obviously going to not only be more sustainable, but it's going to make our economies grow. So let's talk about the future in the last five minutes, okay? First of all, we have challenges. I think security, I was talking to Mihai uh, before, security is something I'm looking at more and more, uh, and not only because Trump and Russians and Hillary Clinton, and I'm sorry for my country, by the way. It's a mess, but I just wanted to say that in public, okay? <laughs> but no, it's clear, especially with the BYOD phenomena, that it is very difficult. It's also difficult for a marketing manager to control the company's image and some of those things when the people all have their own devices. So where are we going with the future? Well, as I said a moment ago, Internet of Things has just begun. 
just before when I went to the men's room, I heard like three things peeping. I thought, oh my God, I'm sure these are not sensors from IoT. But I think more and more we will get used to everything connecting to the internet. It will be second nature. But look, uh, these are uh, computer world um, surveys from last year compared to this year. Look at the tremendous um, um, gains or increases in new areas of investment from last year to now. Uh, people who are working on an IoT project or that say that they are already be beta testing an IoT Internet of Things uh, project. So uh, IoT is very, very important for both IT and marketing, obviously. And uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite Hungarian words. <laughs> because, you know, when you're toasting, it sounds like you're already drunk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've often felt when I heard the, the word, I love this word. It just sounds like you've ha already had three glasses of wine, you know. <laughs> but this is also how I feel. I have changed my agency in the last two years from a very successful creative and strategic agency to now creative, strategic, and analytic. We focus on data and big data and every client now wants dashboards and they want their big data. And I think this cartoon is very right. He says, after seeing all these 437 charts, I've decided I don't know anything, so let's go to the bar and get drunk. You know, I mean, that's how we feel these days because we're still getting used to this speed of information flow. Um, so I'm, I'm finishing. I have a couple slides more. But I want to point your attention, if you download this in, in SlideShare, also a budget uh, constraints, uh, economic pressure, security, managing uh, business alignment. These are the CIO's top challenges or worries. And this is where I say you have a new ally in the marketing department because the marketing department you used to know before 2016 is here, kind of it's a hipster guy. Uh, you might think they're like the salespeople. They, they spend two hours at lunch and they don't do anything. They talk a lot, you know. <laughs> but we have some new marketing people here who are they're like uh, bots. They're very focused on uh, return on investment, the ROI. They're, in, they're focused on analytics. This is a new team. And I have this team in my agency. So I want to show you um, now, we did a project for a luxury hotel chain in Spain. Uh, they're also in uh, London and Paris and other uh, European countries. And our problem was, uh, in June, we did not have a good enough database of customers. We did not have the personal information that we needed about these people. So between marketing and IT, we created, uh, it's a, like a questionnaire, but it looks more like a game, and I'd like to show you it. Uh, of all of the people who started this game, which was a, a survey, really, to find out more about them, more than 55% finished it and gave us very detailed information about themselves. Uh, but before we go, just one more reminder, this is your new ally, this is your new team. It, it's it marketing. And I'm telling you, in name of all of the marketing people in Europe at least, we need you. We need IT. We need to have a coffee once a month with the CIO. We need to listen to what she is hearing about trends or what he is planning and vice versa. We have to stop this idea of two separate worlds. Seriously, I think this is the key to your success and my success, all of us together in the next couple of years. So let's take a look at this video and then I'll just have one or two more slides.
Okay, so finishing, uh, just a couple points there. Uh, you know, if somebody asks you to fill out a survey, it's like I look for a tie to hang myself. Unless they give me $100,000, then I will spend five minutes with these terribly boring forms, right? We made it like a game. There is also something very innovative that uh, my technical director uh, suggested to me called narrative forms. When you saw the guidebook, this little book in the middle of the video, and uh, the person is telling them, okay, what restaurants do you like in Paris when you go to London? Uh, you know, how do you go? By plane, by train, do you swim? <laughs> we, we found out all of these things. Um, the second thing is, uh, and I didn't mention it, we, we found that the most profitable customer are women for this luxury hotel chain in Europe. And this is our focus too. We are always looking for the 20% in a database that is causing the 80% of all the business. And this is also, once again, where I'm calling my technical director and saying, I need to do a, I need to do a search in the database to find the 20% that's most profitable. So two more slides, I think. Uh, yes. Um, this is where we are. Well, we're, we're not in that tower. We're in this district of Barcelona. We're uh, here in Barcelona. This is the technology uh, district. You do have this uh, same um, presentation up on SlideShare. I did take the Derby video out for confidential reasons because there's much of their uh, in, internal information there, but the rest is all there. And uh, I have nothing more than to say Kusnem Sepen. Uh, or Kusi, <laughs> for my friends. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, here's where you will find uh, me and us, and uh, again, in LinkedIn, Twitter, or wherever you are living your digital life. So thank you very much. Thank you, Shandor.